Outside the garden, the world was still a beautiful place, but it also included bad things like prickly thorns, pesky bugs, skinned knees, and stuffy noses. Many animals were no longer friendly. Food was not easy to find. Adam and Eve had to work hard just to fill their hungry stomachs. They also had moments of happiness and joy. Adam lay with his wife Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. Eve named the world's first baby, Cain, meaning possession. What a precious treasure from God. Perhaps she thought her son would be the promised savior, but she soon discovered her cute little boy was stubborn and self-centered, just like his parents. Later, when their second son was born, Eve named him Abel, meaning vanity or nothing. Clearly, Adam and Eve could not produce the sinless offspring of a woman who would save people from their sins. Instead of reflecting God's holy image, Adam and Eve's offspring reflected their own sin-bent natures. Adam had sons and daughters in his own likeness, in his own image. Look at the picture. Do you see Cain grabbing the melon from his little brother? He is acting like his parents, who took the fruit that was not theirs. Like a contagious disease, Adam and Eve's sin had infected their children. When Adam sinned, sin entered the world. Adam's sin brought death, so death spread to everyone, for everyone sinned. An African proverb says, a rat can only produce offspring that dig. An Arab proverb voices the same fact. The son of a duck is a floater. When our first parents sinned, they became like a branch broken from a tree. Just as every twig and leaf on the broken branch is affected, so every member of Adam's family branch is affected by Adam's sin. Long after Adam died, the prophet King David wrote, I was born a sinner, yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. We may not like to hear this, but we know it is true. Adam and Eve had many sons and daughters, but the scriptures focus on the story of their first two boys. Now Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. Both Cain and Abel were good workers. Both knew about their Creator. Both wanted God to accept them and their worship. Both had the same problem, sin. Not only were they born sinners, but they lived like sinners. Each day they thought, spoke, and acted in ways that did not reflect God's pure and loving nature. In his book, the King of the Universe calls this sin. Everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Was there a way for God to pardon Cain and Abel and declare them righteous in his sight? Yes but it would be very, very costly. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. That unbreakable law of the universe, the law of sin and death, must be carried out. Sin must be punished with death. That is why the king's way of forgiveness required a death payment. While the sinner deserved to die, God would accept the blood of certain kinds of animals, such as a lamb. The lamb could not be sick or scratched or dirty. It had to be healthy and clean. It had to be a perfect lamb. The lamb would be killed and burned. It would die in the place of the guilty sinner. The lamb would be the sinner's substitute. 
One day, both brothers brought offerings to God, but only one brought the right offering. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. But Abel brought fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. Which offering do you think God accepted? Look at the brothers. Look at what they are about to offer to God. Look at the altars. An altar was a raised platform, usually made from stones or dirt. It was a place of death. The altar held up the offering between heaven and earth, between God and man. Whatever was offered on the altar was to be burned with fire. God always upholds justice, but wants to show mercy. How could he do both? How could he punish sin without punishing the sinner? Long after the time of Cain and Abel, God told the prophet Moses, the life of a creature is in the blood, and I have given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. He is to lay his hand on the head of the burnt offering, and it will be accepted on his behalf to make atonement for him. What does atonement mean? It has to do with paying the required ransom price so that sins can be covered, cleansed, and forgiven. In Old Testament times, God told people that he would accept the shed blood of healthy lambs, rams, goats, bulls, and doves as payment for their sins. Such blood would provide atonement, a covering for sin, but only until the day God provided a perfect sacrifice to pay the true price required by the law of sin and death. Now look at Cain and what he's about to offer to God. What a beautiful selection of fruits and vegetables. How hard he had worked to produce this offering. But it could not cover his sins because it had no blood, no death payment. Look at Abel and his offering. What a sad sight. The little lamb is bound and about to die. Do you see Abel laying his hand on the lamb's head? Because Abel believed God's plan, God took all of Abel's sins and put them on the lamb. Abel is thanking the Lord that although he, Abel, deserves the death penalty, God will accept the lamb's blood as a covering for sin. God's law required that all sinners be punished with death, but God in his justice and mercy would accept the death of a lamb in their place. God calls this the law of the sin offering. The law of the sin offering set Abel free from the law of sin and death. But what about Cain? Do you see Cain's altar? What is on it? Wilting crops. Now look at Abel's altar. What is on it? Blood and ashes. What did God think of these two brothers and their worship? The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. We are not told how God showed his approval of Abel's sacrifice and his rejection of Cain's sacrifice. The scripture simply says, by faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offerings. Because he trusted in the Lord and his plan, Abel was forgiven and declared righteous. This was God's gift to Abel. God had loaded Abel's sins onto the lamb. The lamb had died in Abel's place. The lamb's blood had been shed and its body burned to ashes. 
God's righteous anger against sin had fallen on the lamb instead of on Abel. Why was God pleased with Abel's sacrificed lamb? Because it pointed to the coming Savior who would one day pay off the sin debt of the world. Because of his faith in God's plan, Abel was now in a right relationship with God. Later, when Abel died, instead of being forever separated from God, he would go to be with God, who was now his friend. The law of the sin offering had triumphed over the law of sin and death. Cain approached God with his prayers, but he ignored God's law that says sin must be punished with death. Cain was religious, but he was not in a right relationship with God. The law of sin and death still hung over him like a dark cloud. If he did not trust God and his plan, he would never know God as his friend. He would face God as his judge. Some people try to defend Cain by saying, Cain was a farmer. He brought what he had. But God didn't want what he had. Cain could have traded some crops for one of Abel's lambs, or he could have placed his hand on Abel's lamb and worshiped at the same altar. What would Cain do? Would he repent and come to God with the right offering? The Lord had refused Cain's offering, yet God still loved him and urged him to repent. What does it mean to repent? Suppose you want to travel to a certain city. After getting on a train, you realize you boarded the wrong train. What do you do? You admit your error, get off that train, and get on the right train. That is what it means to repent. To repent means to change your mind, to turn from what is false and submit to what is true. To repent before God does not mean that I must punish myself for my sins. It does mean that I must see my sin as God sees it. God wanted Cain to repent, to stop trusting in his own way and to trust and follow God's way. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. Cain was too proud to repent. He had been shamed by his brother. He would rid himself of this shame and restore honor in his own way. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out to the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is your brother Abel? I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Abel's soul and spirit had gone to be with the Lord, but his body would return to dust until a future day when God transforms that dust into a glorious body fit for eternity. As for Cain, God gave him another chance to repent, but he refused. So Cain went out from the Lord's presence. In a spirit of rebellion and pride, Cain moved east and built a city. He and his wife had many children. Their great, 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 great grandchildren made the first metal tools and musical instruments. Cain's descendants were very intelligent but they did not know the Lord. <laughs>